back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about my experience working as a singer on board Carnival Cruise Lines. I get asked these questions all the time because I briefly discuss experiences on various videos. So a lot of questions are, can you elaborate on this? How was life on the ships? How did you do this? How did you get this job? So I thought the best way to answer all these questions would be just have a sit down, conversational video to explain to you guys how I got this job, what I thought about it, and what it was like going from college student one month to traveling the world as a full-time professional singer the next month. So without any further ado, I got my coffee, go ahead and grab yours. We'll have my first kind of chit chat video and I'll let you guys know how that happened. I do get asked a lot, how did you get this job? I was finishing my master's degree and I graduated with that in August. But there was a little bit of time in June and July where I scraped together every penny I had and honestly I think it was less than $500 and I went to New York and I auditioned for everything. Like I would open the newspaper they had backstage, I would check online emails for any kind of audition and I think it was like my last day or second to last day I saw they had auditions for Norwegian Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean and Carnival. They were in New York, you just went in, signed up, which is great for singers um, that don't have an agent to like book them an audition. You really want the ones that just say sign up, open call. Open call is what I went to. And it was just like any other audition. You get there like 5 or 6 a.m., put your name on the list, and then you come back at 11 and your place has been given. I think I was somewhere in the middle of this open call because everyone goes to open call. So hundreds of people, girl singer, guy singers, dancers, like specialty acts, just everybody. And then I think musicians, like piano players, strings, everything. If you played an instrument, you came the next day. Anyway, put a number on, you go in, you audition. They have a whole panel of people in front of you and then behind the panel is a camera. So they can see not only what you look like, the number which matches, you know, your resume, the picture that you gave them in the beginning. I had to sing, I think, two or three songs, different styles. I actually, God help me, forget what the songs were because I did so many auditions and they kind of all blur together. But you sing, they kind of interview you to make sure that you also have a personality because it's one thing to be able to sing all the shows, but your job on a cruise ship is not just walking out, singing, and going home. Clearly, you live on board. You have to be hospitable, friendly, welcoming, warming, and they like to make you memorable. So you can say, I went on a ship and that girl Kristen who sang our show, she sure was nice. She knew our name. She knew why we were vacationing, like if it was a honeymoon or any kind of vacation. They really want you to hone in on their experience. So I mean, I went on board as a singer, but I feel like I got a crash course business degree, hospitality degree, hotel management degree, all in one. But anyway, going back to the audition, I sang my songs did a little tiny interview, and then they ask you, you know, some very serious questions. Are you okay with giving up your home life for six to eight months? If you have a spouse or family to take care of, you don't see them every day. You are giving up your life for six months. It's not just fly in, do the shows, and go home that night. You are on board a ship for six to eight months at a time, day and night. So they ask that question. They're very serious about it. So they'll ask you, are you willing to, you know, go on board ships for six months? Do you have a passport? Do you need a medical? Because you're obviously going to foreign countries. It's kind of an elaborate process. They don't tell you you have the job then. They just kind of check off that you sang, you interviewed. If you are called, you're willing to, you know, go, here's your dates of availability, and do you have your passport and your medical? Fill it all out, go your separate ways. So I flew back to Ohio after my little stunt in New York with all the auditions, and I was finishing up my last class of my master's. I needed one class that wasn't available in the spring, so I took it in the summer, hence why I graduated in August. Fast forward to August 4th. I was cleaning my apartment up because I was graduating the next day. I hadn't secured a job. I was ready to do, you know, the starving artist track of waiting tables and counting pennies and doing as many auditions as I could, living in a place with six roommates. Like, I was getting myself very mentally prepared for what I had been told was a really rough life. I kind of knew I'd signed myself up for it and I was ready. Packing up, packing up, then the phone rings. Pick up my cell phone. Hi, this is such and such from Carnival Cruise Lines in Miami, Florida. We saw you audition in New York on such and such dates. We were wondering your availability for a current contract. Someone who's packing to graduate college. 
that doesn't have a job, you get phone calls like that, A, I thought it was one of my friends pranking me. I did not believe that this was a real valid phone call. Then I went back, I, I obviously told the woman on the phone like, oh, that's so great, uh, here's my availability, and here's how you can contact me like with a contract, because they don't just verbally tell it to you over the phone, they give you, you know, a PDF contract for you to look over, sign, so on and so forth. So I thought, oh yeah, this is real. Here's my email, here's my availability, you obviously have my phone number, so you know how to get in contact with me. Went back on to packing my day, kind of like, that was cool, I mean, if that actually worked out, that'd be kind of nice, because she didn't offer me a, here's a job, she just said, when are you available? which in singer world is pretty common. They want to know when they can book you. Go on, pack all my stuff, get an email. This is before it was on cell phones. It was on my laptop. I heard a little ding, went and checked. It was her. She had offered me a six month contract on board the Carnival Pride out of Baltimore, Maryland. And I read it slightly in disbelief. Like, could not believe this was happening to me. It was set for late October, early November. So I still had time to pack things up, get my affairs in order on land. My family all came to my graduation the next day. And I'm the only one in my family that has anything to do with music and the arts as a profession. They all, you know, supported me. That's never been an issue. They've always been fully on board with me wanting to do music and the arts. But graduating the next day, August 5th, walking, and I didn't really tell a lot of people then, walked, got my diploma, went out to dinner and then it's that fun you know conversation with non-music or artsy folks of um so you have this degree what's next and to stand up and be so excited and say i know you guys thank you so much for supporting me my next you know job or my first job out of college is going to be singing on board the carnival pride out of baltimore maryland and it was awesome, like it just felt so great. So in essence, that's how I got the job. Fast forward two months later, Carnival sends me my airline tickets and lets me know that before I go on board, I have four weeks of rehearsal in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They house all the singers, dancers, musicians in these really nice little apartments and then we rehearse basically like a nine to five job, six days a week so we can learn all the music and everything that we're responsible for knowing once we get on board the ship which is really nice because once you get on board, it's not a culture shock, but you're already kind of getting used to the environment, meeting your coworkers, all while guests are still coming on board on vacation. There's no pause, we have some new singers on board, let's give them a few days to settle in. I'm very thankful that Carnival takes the time to send us our music ahead of time, they house us for four weeks, and they just kind of take care of you while you prepare the shows that they're gonna have you do on board the ships. So, four weeks of rehearsal, you kind of get to meet your coworkers, your fellow musicians, singers, so on and so forth. Then they ship you out, ship you out, to your respective home port, which for me was Baltimore, Maryland. I got to Baltimore November 20th. So, first week on board the ships. Responsibilities are go to a bunch of trainings just to see what's expected of you, because again, you are not just a entertainment staff, you're not just a singer, you're responsible for boat drills, what's called Just Ask, which we'll get to so much later. Oh my gosh, so much later. And there's just other responsibilities like um, crisis management training. They just have a bunch of different things they need you to know so that you can handle any kind of crisis or emergency because even though you're in the entertainment department, you are still a worker on board the ship first and foremost. And they like to treat you like a team, which is really nice when you're living with these people day and night. So we covered the basis of everything that happens. I made kind of a list of all your questions. Let's see, typical day routine. Well, there's two kinds of days on board cruise ships. There are port days where we obviously stop at land and there are sea days. Those are very different. On sea days, when you're obviously not going anywhere because you're just in the middle of the ocean, uh, musicians, entertainment staff, we have specific duties. Depending on the ship, some people have to do things like run bingos, give tours. Others are only responsible when their shows happen. And for me, majority of my ships, I was just doing things when my shows were happening, which was typically about four to five o'clock, get ready for your shows, have your dinner, do your makeup, which was nice. And then on port days, you were clearly allowed to get off the ship because they want you to you know, get off the ship, get a little fresh air, spend a little time on land, which is when people typically got their Wi-Fi, called home, did a little sightseeing, or we can do the same shore excursions that the guests could do. 
not everybody gets to get off the ship each port. We have, again, what's called port manning. Typically, how do I explain this? In maritime law, it clearly states that a certain number of cruise ship employees must always be on board the ship at all times. And to make it fair for everybody, we do it in rotations. And we rotate in departments. Entertainment department will do it. Um, like the food department, hotel department, we will all rotate. So typically for the entertainment department, because I can't speak for the others, out of the four weeks per month, one of those weeks you could not get off the ship. You had to stay on board that whole week. It was called port manning. They took your little ID card that you would use to punch off and on the ship and they would put it in an office and you had to turn it in before the cruise and pick it up right before the next home port. What are the best parts of working on board a cruise ship? All right, best parts I would say definitely seeing different ports of call because you are in essence on a floating hotel it takes you all around the world and you do a job in the evenings but during the day you can go off and you can travel one of my biggest regrets is i didn't have youtube at this time and i didn't really get into social media until my last ship i did get my instagram if you go to my instagram which i'll obviously link down below and you go to my very first photos like my first 60 photos I was finishing off my last cruise on the Carnival Freedom, which started out in Florida, but then we transitioned and our home port was Galveston, Texas. And I started taking pictures then just because I didn't know anything about Instagram. I got a cell phone one day a week for six hours in my home port. So I wasn't really into the social media, but I would say best parts, the ports of call, um, the crew activities, since you are living on board, in college, you have a social events calendar. On cruise ships, you have an activities calendar. And they would have parties for us. They would theme them. They would have like just different various activities. Some nights they would give us the upper Lido deck and let us have a crew only party. They would um, section off so guests could have part of the deck, but most of it was ours. So we could go out and kind of enjoy the ship, the nightlife, see the stars at night on board. My favorite, and this makes me sound super old, and no one that I worked with is going to agree with this. Sorry, judge me all you want, cruise ship employees. I loved playing crew bingo. Why? Not just because I'm old, but because 1,200 people, crew members, would each pitch in 20 to $50, depending on how many raffles and boards you wanted to play bingo. That made for a very nice pot we were playing for, big cash pot. But then on top of the cash, Carnival would also give iPads, cell phones. Fun fact, this was won during a crew bingo on board the Carnival Paradise. I only did two months on board, but I went to every crew bingo. But then we didn't just have like drinking parties and crew bingo. They also had like different nights where our chefs would make us like a special meal. Like if we were going to Mexico, we'd have different types of Mexican cuisine. South America, we would have that. It made it a little special because again, a lot of times you're not home for Thanksgiving, Christmas. You're missing weddings. Life goes on without you, which is a whole other topic. It's really hard when you come back to home and you feel like you've been in a time capsule for six to eight months. People have, you know, moved on, gotten married, had kids, bought homes, and you're planning out what ships you're going to next and what ports of call you're gonna see. I would honestly say my hardest transition wasn't going to college, wasn't moving around. The hardest transition was finally stepping off to the next chapter after ships. That covers the best parts of cruise ship life, where the ports, the crew members that became your family, the activities that you had on board the ships, and honestly, the people that I met. I had a Facebook page, which is still the Facebook page listed below, because my regular personal page was for me and my family, but then I said, hey, if I meet some cool guests, wanna keep in contact, here's facebook.com slash Kristen Basor. Shameless plug. What were the worst parts about cruise ships? I would say weekly boat drills, especially when they were on Sundays in Baltimore, Maryland, where everybody wanted to watch the Ravens play and they did not want to turn off their TVs for 45 minutes and stand outside and see what they were going to do in the event of an emergency. But we had to have it. Out of all my seven ships, can I name them? Pride, The Ecstasy, The Imagination, The Glory, Paradise, the fantasy and the freedom. Got them all. If you cruised on those, leave me a comment down below because I was probably on board. 
Out of all seven of those ships, boat drills were never fun. No one liked them. And they were just, they were just a pain. I knew we had to do them. Like, I know, first world problems. But that was a big bust. Other bad parts. Um... Drunken guests or just rude guests that happens in every job, especially when it's face to face I mean, I'm not customer service, but trust me if someone had a bad cruise and I had a name tag on They would clearly know that they could come complain to me and I couldn't do anything about it I actually have a video on here of the worst pickup line ever which I will link in the cards Happened on board a cruise ship during spring break week if you want to see how awkward that was check that out and then again, like I already said, just missing society and your life going on without you in it was really, really hard. I missed like my sister and brother's graduations and just a lot of like milestone events in their life. And I had to hear about them on the phone when they were done and look for pictures on Facebook. Would you recommend working on board a cruise ship? I would recommend working on board a cruise ship if you're young, if you don't have a lot of responsibility at home. I would not recommend it if you're married or have children or just outside responsibilities that you cannot pull yourself away from. If you cannot pull yourself away from your cell phone, where you only have this once a week, you could pay for it on board the ship. You can buy Wi-Fi. It's very expensive, very, very slow. It may have changed in the last year, but from the last time I saw it, it was a little slow. Uh, let's see here. Any other good experiences worth mentioning? Yeah, um, in 2015, Carnival rolled out what was called Carnival Live, which they would bring on board, like, singers, country singers, pop singers, just different well-known groups, and they would bring them on board the ship so people could, you know, go on a vacation, then while on vacation, see a concert on board in the theater. Um, uh, my ships did Journey. We did Little Big Town. And then when we came into Galveston, we had Martina McBride come on board. And then we, as the singers, you know, would do little concerts, like kind of open for them so they could have time to be on board the ship because they didn't stay on board. They were flown in and flown out because they, they weren't on vacation. But no, Carnival Live was great. Carnival had started putting like more water parks on board their ships. They had a 3D and 4D movie theater. They had different kinds of restaurants on board, like wonderful. If you're looking to cruise, I mean, I haven't been on any other cruise, so I can't really say, like, they're the best, but I, from watching seven ships worth, people really did enjoy their vacation, enjoy their vacations for the most part. All right, my battery's gonna die, so let's do frequently asked questions. How many ships did you do? Seven. How do you get these jobs? I did mine personally through an audition. Some people had agents that did it. It really just depends. You can go to their website, see when they have auditions, where they'll be. And that's not just for Carnival, you can search anything. Like if you want to work for Royal Caribbean, you can Google Royal Caribbean jobs or Royal Caribbean career or auditions and just see. Uh, do you have to pay to live on board? No, you do not have to pay to live on board. Your room and board, food, health insurance, everything is covered and you just get your paycheck, which again is really scary for those that don't have budgeting experience. I saw a lot of people work several years on board ships, never saving anything, and then they would get on land, try to get jobs, and when it wouldn't work out, they'd go right back on ships. And they developed, like, depression, alcoholism. They just they didn't know how to spend their money, and they couldn't really make it on land, and all they knew was ships. And, and that's one of the big reasons I said, okay, while well, still in my 20s, I really feel like I need to try a new chapter because I could get used to this, this could be my thing, but I really feel like I need to try land out. So I saved up everything I could, um, Got myself an apartment on land, did auditions, interviewed for jobs, and here I am. All right, other questions. Are you allowed off the ship? Yes. Let off the ships, like we covered Port Manning. Three weeks out of the month, you could go off whenever you wanted, and the one week you were on Port Manning. Also should mention, um, when you were on Port Manning and you couldn't get off the ships, they put you on something called Just Ask which is where you stand in the lobby as the guests come on board their first day. Since you can't get off the ship, they put you to work anyway. You answer all the guests' questions, which is mainly, where's the food? When am I gonna get my bags? How do I find my cabin? But you stand there for four hours and answer all their questions. Just ask. What are the biggest rules on board? Biggest rules on board are obviously respect the guests, respect yourself, you know, no going in places you're not allowed to go. Like, I couldn't go to the boiler room. I couldn't go in certain parts of the ships. Big, big rule. No 
fraternizing with guests. Don't go in their cabins, don't do anything that would just be deemed as inappropriate on the ship. I've heard several horror stories of people like hooking up on the ships and then the girl would get off the ship and say, oh, I was molested or I was raped. And I'm not saying they all cried wolf. I'm not involved in any of that. I'm just saying in light of those situations, they made a very specific rule. If you were found in a guest cabin or a guest was found in your crew area, chances are you were being sent home. Now, those, those are the big, big rules. We also couldn't dine like in the guest areas unless we had passes. My parents came and cruised on a lot of ships. My family came and cruised on my last ship, on the Freedom. I had a majority of my family come and do Christmas and New Year on board the ship, which was nice because Carnival gave them a family discount and it was just nice to have my family on board. How are the living quarters? I think I have some pictures. I'll include them on this part. Living quarters weren't bad. Singers were lucky enough. We got our own cabin. I did not request or demand this. It was just in the contract, so I rolled with it. I think I answered most of them. Yep, we talked about Little Big Town, Journey, Martina McBride. We covered Spring Break Cruises. We covered all seven of them. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below with the hashtag Q, letter Q, the number four, Kristen. Leave your questions down below. If I get a bunch, I'll answer them either a live stream or a follow-up video. I hope you guys like this. If you like these kind of videos, give this one a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed, click the little red subscription button down below. It'll update you each and every time I upload a video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions about Carnival Cruise Lines, living on board cruise ships, or just being a professional singer. I'd be happy to answer them. Have a wonderful day, you guys. I'll see you in the next one.